Yeah. You know what? Come over here. So, yeah, right there. So we, so we got your banner. There we go. Activate and with me as always, Big Dog Defender, and with me per sometimes is Hi, I'm Matt Bomber, one of the creative minds behind the original English language shown in style manga and live action ninja supersats web series, Mortal Red Fox. Could you say your well, name again, sir? Shorter... Yeah, I was gonna say, go for it. Just your name. Matt Palmer. Okay, because we got the Shonen, awesome Red Fox, everything else, but but we didn't know who you were. Well, we did, but the people might not know. Okay. I'll put a, I'll put a thing over your head so they know. So uh, we, the big dog and I know what Red Fox is, and probably a lot of our viewers do. But just in case someone doesn't, um, you gave that quick pitch. But but really, what is what is it? Is it a, a movie theater? Is it a, a line of ice cream? What what is the Red Fox? What is the Immortal Red Fox? For one. And do I wish it was a line of ice cream, because that would be amazing. Uh, but no, the Immortal Red Fox started back in 2017 as an idea for an independently released Shonen-style uh, comic. Uh, in vain of, uh, in the vein of, of Super Sentai and, and Power Rangers and Ultraman and Kamen Rider and Tokusatsu and all of the great things that we grew up with that Bring us here to watch this show today basically uh, and then from the comics we stemmed into our own independently made live action tokusatsu series in the united states that's amazing and, and in texas specifically specifically texas texas Atsu, baby. that's what i was looking for texas Atsu. <laughs> so uh we had you on a while ago i want to say it was like a year ago maybe about yeah and i think I think you were our first guest as well. I, I think we, I might have had a shout out from a, like a Ranger actor, but you were like our first real guest. So that was awesome. So it's good to have you back. And at the time, I think you had maybe two episodes out, maybe. You just dropped episode two at uh, Power Morphicon Express. Okay, which is where we met originally. Yes. And now uh, you have up to four out, not including the English dub uh, that we're like episode one. Uh, and when people are watching this, we're recording it Tuesday, but it's going to be airing on Wednesday after something happens on your channel, which is? Uh, the Immortal Red Fox Episode 5, Showdown in Tokyo, um, which, uh, and oh man, a lot of fun to go and, and be through about two years worth of old footage uh, to go and make an episode. Wow. Um, yeah. And if you guys, I know you guys have seen it already. Um, we have. <laughs> kind of in this weird space-time continuum thing where people are watching us and they think it's happening now, but it's not. Right. Um, but you guys have already seen it because uh, apparently we're all from the future. We are. Yeah. We're, we're all from the future. You're more. You're from further in the future than we are. We're from like a day in the future. You're from like two years into the future. Yeah. Right. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, Episode five just dropped on our YouTube channel right. and um, response has been really, really awesome um, since our Morphicon Express over the last year, but more specifically, and you guys touched on this uh, a few weeks back in a news episode of Action Activate that um, we've been noticing a lot more traffic, yeah. uh, which I love. It makes me super happy. You know what I mean? Never in a million years did I think that people would want to watch our stuff and, and go oh, and wait. tune in. Hold on. I got to stop you right there. That's not true. Never in a million years did I think anyone would want to watch this thing that I'm putting so much time and effort into. You had to believe somebody would want to watch it. Maybe like, you know, a handful of people and okay. my friends and stuff like that in the community. But I'll be in the handful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know that when I look at the screen, you're on the left side of me, so I'm yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you're on my right, so thank you. That was okay. correct. <laughs> but, 
um, yeah, you know, and it's great, man. It, like, honestly, making this stuff has always been uh, something that I wanted to do since I was a kid. Now, my first interview with you guys, we talked about hunting down VHS copies of all sorts of different Super Sentai shows and what have you. Right. And uh, I didn't get to tell you one other little tasty tidbit about that. And I'll have to dig up the old old ADAT tapes and stuff like that. But when I tried to make my first Power Ranger movie, about 10, nice. 10 years old. Um, and I mean, like, full on, I was Tommy. Right. It was, nice. It was serious. Like, my mom had hair extensions. I wore those hair extensions underneath a white That's bandana. That's fantastic. That's it's, awesome. It's was pretty there- was there anybody in it other than you, or was it that thing where you played every character? Um, my grandfather was in it. Oh, as who? Uh, he 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 played someone who looked kind of like a cross between um, Bones and Babu. What was um, what was the first one you said in Babu? Bones. Oh, remember okay. the, the the like the skeleton guy with the top yeah, hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Throw it. Nice. Uh, but it was kind of like that, and um, made a, a Megazord cockpit out of a shoebox and put my old eight-inch MMPR figures. Oh, in there. that's fantastic! End up all my toys on the dining it, room. You table gotta, you me. gotta find that and digitize it and put it on your YouTube channel as like a, yeah. an Easter egg. I will dig it up. I have to go. You know, I'd, I'd have to go back up, uh, back up north to New York where my parents live. It's gotta be there somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once a week, at least, my my old man sends me pictures and stuff of just bins of toys and right. suits. My, my first suits. Right, right. Oh, oh man. You God. maybe maybe you have to rent a U-Haul one day and just like you know take everything. Dude, I would love that. I yeah. would love that. Um, you know, my um, I remember. I don't want to get too sentimental, but my grandmother um made all my suits. Oh, and, that's you awesome. know, grandmother has long since passed Mm -hmm. but because of the work that she put into them my mother also holds them very near and dear to her heart right um, i remember my grandmother watching um return of an old friend which is where Tommy comes back Mm -hmm. you know gets the green power coin back and right (laughs) lightning and stuff and they're like oh it's not gonna work we gotta save our parents (laughs) Uh, you know, that was the first real time in, in in fighting, you know what I mean? And in action that we saw American footage of the Green Ranger really going at it and just Green Ranger. Right. Yep. Uh, we had that gold lame. Kind of floppy a little bit. <laughs> yep. It's kind of floppy. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden in the cosplay community is like, oh, it's cool because it's the, the American <laughs> version. Well, I always liked that it was shinier. Like I didn't, I don't like that it's floppy, but I like that it was more chromey, shiny. Yeah, the green of the suit was slightly different, and all this stuff. And um, and oh man, um, I I remember you, know, you guys talk about toys and stuff a lot too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember the day that I, I opened this this amazing, beautiful costume on Christmas morning, and um, it's just such a great memory. The only thing that you couldn't find when I was a kid, obviously you guys know, were helmets. Mm. And um, I showed my mom the day that I got my <laughs> my legacy green MMPR, which is the American style. It's got the yep. clips on the yep. outside, slightly bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah, it fits yeah, my yeah. giant doll. And uh, sent her the picture, and she's like, your grandmother would be so happy right now. <laughs> and hear that, um, you know, like, as yeah. you know, I'm a medical professional too. My mom is also. Uh, to hear that from your mom, who you would, who you always talk about work with, right? See yeah. a picture of a toy, basically, and have her go and find the vein to relate to it. That's great. Um, it is a great memory, and it's one of the reasons that I do what I do now. Yeah, well, and and that's that's any. I mean, we're talking about Power Rangers, Super Sentai, Tokusatsu fandom, but any good fandom. 
it starts with, oh, I love the costumes, I love the stories, I love that actor, but it always becomes part of your life and the people around you, and you make connections with friends and family, and exactly what we were talking about, like, you know, your mother and grandmother probably don't really care about Power Rangers, but they care about you, and they care about each other, and boom, there you go, now it's part of the Power Rangers family, it's, it's awesome, that's a great story. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Big Doug, didn't you, your, who made your, you had a mask. So... Yes, so I have a uh, homemade uh, Red Ranger mask that I actually got signed. I don't remember if we shared this full story after the interview, but uh, I met Austin St. John, interviewed him at Silicon Valley Comic Con last year. And after we were done, I was like, hey, I want to get an autograph from you. And uh, he was like, yeah, of course, of course, Uh, you know, went through the whole process and uh, told him the story about uh, this mask because we had talked, obviously, us being a Power Ranger show. I'm reaching in my bag to get something signed. He's like, okay, and waits. And I pull out this little, like, rinky-dink mask that clearly, like, even the cut marks for the teeth, it's overcut <laughs> on certain ones. It's not even, like... But wait, I, but uh, he, it looks... You are underselling it. It is very much looks homemade, but it's amazing for homemade. Like, like oh, yeah. I, it looks really, really good. It's clearly homemade, but it's not... Yes. It was love was put into this, you know? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't like a onicky home sewn mask. It was like <laughs> one... Uh, I'm surprised it's still in that condition after almost 30 years, but uh, I brought it out, and he ha- kind of had, like, kind of... I've been looking at all of our faces. We've been talking about your story or responding to your story, and it was kind of that grin of, like, nostalgia, kind of wholesomeness, and he looked, and he's like, all right. Like, you're not getting your vintage carded red ranger sign you're not pulling out a legacy morpher <laughs> it's this thing right here is kind of the bridge that gaps my you know always wanting to meet him and meeting him and i told him the story about it and he as he signed it is like hey you got to go to michael's get this special spray i forget the name of it it's going to make sure that the coating on there yeah. is uh i think it's kind of staying and it doesn't something. yeah yeah it was something like that and uh, kind of ensuring that it stays on there and doesn't rub off. And uh, after that, we were kind of sold uh, sold on the whole experience. I remember <laughs> walking away. Gaz was the one who was professional, kind of keeping everything alive. I was like, oh, uh, thank you. Uh. And we're, he's just like, keep walking, keep walking. We turned a corner, and then just like my knees buckled. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, a full fanboy for I, I was worried I was going to have to catch him. I'm like, come on, just keep it together. Just keep it together, buddy. <laughs> he's holding the tripod and just like, yep, let's move, let's move. And then the yeah. emotions. But uh, no, man, it's something weird, especially about that time for Mighty Morphin specifically. Obviously, the toys were huge. All these things are huge. But then when it comes down to it, it seems like, you know, most people I've talked to who were so invested like ourselves in that era is, you know, what do you remember? Oh, I I went to somebody's birthday and all of us had the mask or, right. you know, or I had this homemade mask, you had your homemade yeah. suit, like things like that. And it's like, you know, we could have all the different toys all we want. And you know how much we love toys. But it's those things <laughs> that just stick with us overall. And it's kind of yeah. interesting. Sure. It's the weird stuff and the homemade stuff that was that was huge for us because if you remember back then, and you're you know you guys are around the same age as I am, couldn't find the toys. I always almost impossible. To that's find. true, but our ages, I think we represent three different ages because uh, okay. Alex is significantly oh. younger than me, and I think you're a, I'm the oldest, I think, and okay. because I. When I watched Power Rangers, when it was first on, I was in high school. I was – or maybe late middle school, early high school. So I was, like, too old for it. And I remember watching it because, like, X-Men was on, and I watched X-Men, and I'm like, this is dumb. Oh, who watched – like, 30 minutes later, I watched the whole thing. You know? like, oh, boy, I was – you know. And From the future, you could talk to guys about that. Right, yeah. <laughs> but I remember arguing with some of my friends when Tommy became the White Ranger and trying to couch it in literacy. I'm like, well, remember there was the Green Knight from 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 King Arthur, and there was the evil witch that gave him the power, and it's kind of like that with Tommy. And I'm like trying to make it seem more like elevate, like. But you know, uh, but what's funny is around that time, I I had a job from a very young age, so I worked at a local toy store when those toys came out, and I couldn't get them, even though I worked there. Because uh, they got like three Dragon Zords and a Megazord or whatever, and the owners gave them to like their favorite customers and like the people that were like, it, you know, and so whatever, fair enough. But I remember it, all we ever had in stock, for even for me who worked there, was like the eight inch monsters and the gloves that made the karate sounds. That was, and, and then little PVCs, 
What? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But everybody wanted the flip heads. Everybody wanted the 8-inch. Everybody wanted the Megazords. And, yeah, it, it was impossible. It was impossible. Um, this is all great. But let's talk about Immortal Red Fox a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Uh yeah. Well, we got the new episode that everyone, if they haven't seen, should go check it out right now on, on your YouTube channel, which is just The Immortal Red Fox, correct? Okay. Uh, and you have all the episodes that we've had so far, including uh, episode one, redubbed in English. Because for those that don't know, it's in Japanese with subtitles. And for episode one, and I think we talked about this a little bit, but I'd like to talk about it more, and I think it'd be interesting to people watching. You got Johnny Young Bosch from Power Rangers, Adam uh, Park, Mighty Morphin black up until turbo green did the voice of the main character of the immortal red fox um act, what's his civilian name what is it is it the same in the japanese and the english version yes okay so the comic i mean he's he's an american guy yes um, you know, he, he lives in japan as an english teacher he's in the jet program right well, I knew that, but now they know that. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Sometimes things get changed when there are translations, so I just didn't know if you do that. I couldn't remember. But so you met – did you meet Johnny Youngbosch at Power Wharf Con Express? Is that where you met him? Okay. Yeah. So I'm curious. How did you get him to agree to be the voice? Well, yeah, first answer that. How did you get him to be the voice? <laughs> Wait, can you not tell this story? Well, yeah. No, absolutely. Oh. Um, it was something that I had thought about for a really long time, you know, right. when, and, and you're a comic artist, understand when you write a character, you kind of have in your head, like, you know, oh, who does he sound like? Does right. he sound like William Shatner? Does he sound <laughs> like James Peter? Who does he sound like? Right, right. And in my head, because of the amount of shonen anime that I had watched, um, he always sounded like Johnny Young Bosch. Right. Yeah. And, and for, for like, the, real quick, for those that don't know, Johnny Young Bosch is a very prolific voice actor and has done lots of hero anime for, in, yeah. He's probably more well known for that in the world. Not in the fan, the Power Rangers fan, but in the world, more people know him for that. But So please continue. Yep. No, he's going to drink from his. What is that Fox Tumblr? That looks amazing. I'm not one for product placement. <laughs> Um, so anyway, um, I had seen him on the first day mm -hmm. and so when you go to conventions and stuff like that, you hang out with your group and you powwow a little bit and, and, and you hang out and pal around and stuff. And I talked to Archer, who's, you know, my, basically my, my, my partner throughout all of the Red Fox stuff, whether it's the live action or the comics. And, uh, I was like, I'm just going to go and try and strike up a conversation somehow. Right. And I saw him in the morning when we were setting up and then he was gone. And okay. And I took one of our little six by nine prints that had the character, uh, you know, had Red Fox and Ted side by side. I don't oh. know if you remember those. I don't, but yeah. Vaguely. Put on the back of it. I was like, hey, Jay, or just a big old Jay. And check out our booth we're right around the corner you know hit me up right i left it on his chair uh, at his table and then maybe about 40 minutes 45 minutes later after all the guests and panelists and what have you had breakfast um he there he is man nice walk right up to the table and you remember we had the tv with all of the episodes that we had had done so far on it and all yep. of our artwork and Luckily, Robert yeah, Guy, the, our the figure too, the figure, yep. yeah. And uh, Robert Guy, uh, our suit actor, happened to be there. Was getting suited up. The nice. only thing he didn't have the helmet on yet. And I mean, like Johnny's just standing there, like just watching the episodes. And uh, I'll never forget it, man. Like I, I look if if, if I'm Johnny, mm -hmm. Robert's like back here. He's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean which is you know it's crazy to think about when when you go and you do this stuff right and um he's like so uh ever thought about doing these in english and i was like well as a matter of fact i have 
And he's like, oh, do you have somebody to do the voice? I was like, well, actually, I wrote it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew once this conversation started, I'm like, it's going to play out exactly like it has in your head that, for yeah. years. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. It was it was that serendipitous once in a lifetime kind of moment where I was like, screw it. I'm just going to I'm going to go for it. I'm going to roll the dice and see what happens. Right. Yep. And Johnny is a busy guy. OK. Yeah. So. You know, like if, if I went and asked Johnny or, or 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 JDF or anybody else to go and do something for me out of the kindness of their own heart, um, I'm sure they would consider it. He actually did it. Right. It took it took some time and everything like that, but he came back to me and was like, Hey, I did this, check it out. I don't know when I can do any more, you know. Like, this is how he makes his money, man, making video yeah, games yeah, yeah. and making all the shows that I watch on Netflix at night. Right. You know what I mean? So um, it was a dream come true. It really, really was. So, going... so he he not only said, yeah, I'll do it, but because that was my follow-up question. How did the recording happen? He just went to a studio or he had a home studio and he recorded the lines and you didn't even have to give him a studio, direct him, nothing. He's just like, here you go. It's done. He, he wrote down his email and his phone number. Right. And you know, after Power Morphicon, it was like, just hit me up. I was like, okay. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> and of course, like the dork that I am, I hit him up like three days later. Because you, know you had I mean? to wait three days. Yeah, the three day rule. Like, yeah, swingers. Go and, and like, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah, swingers, baby, swingers. Um, exactly. <laughs> Your money. You don't yeah. even know it. You're a beautiful baby. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear anything back for, um, you know, months, ever. Oh, because oh, I remember when we, when we were at Silicon Valley Comic Con, where the story he just told about Austin St. John, Johnny Ambosh was there, and we've interviewed a lot of people, but I've never got a chance to interview him. I'm like, oh, let's do inter John Johnny Ambosh. And you were you would talk to me, and it's like, yeah, if you see him, let him know. I, I, I'll try to get in touch with him. And talking about being a busy guy, the th I, he was never at his table. He was always running around doing panels and stuff. Or he was busy. And then the third day, I'm like, well, it's going to be slower. He had to leave. He had a job. So, yeah. <laughs> Talk about, like, I saw firsthand how busy that guy is. He works around the clock. Yeah. So, yep. so anything um, that he was willing to do to help me. Right. I mean, like, I'm, in, I, I'm eternally grateful. I'm immortally grateful. Ah. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to be able to um, get that memory. Not and um, so... I email him and, uh, you know, I just wait. Right. I, mean, I waited for like two months. I didn't even think about it anymore. I was like, it's not going to happen. You right. Know, whatever. And then out of nowhere, this random email, like, why do I know that email? Right. It, it's weird. It has to do with frogs. I was going to ask if it was something about a frog. <laughs> it is. Okay. Um, like, hey, what's up? I finished this one. Let me know what you think of it. Line it up to the video and check it out. He just signs everything. <laughs> That's awesome. So, but you gave him a script. He didn't like ad lib it. He just went and watched the Japanese version. He watched the subs. Oh, right. But it was wasn't his reading a little bit different? Like, Light, but hey, look, I don't. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that in a negative way, but he put a little bit of a spin on it. and just, it's, That's yeah. the most amazing part to me is that he's like, yeah, I'll do this. And then he doesn't get back to you. And you'd think he'd be like, okay, what are we doing? How do I? And he's like, okay, it's done. It's just yeah. done. Here you go. That's it. Okay. So this is all amazing. And he does a great job. And again, that episode is also up on your YouTube channel that people can check out. Uh, and it's slightly different. You did a little bit of re-editing to polish it up and make it look even nicer than the Japanese version. Um, not to take away from any of that. What are the chances he's going to do more episodes? Is there any chance? I'm hopeful that he will. Um, you know, so right now he has done, uh, you know, a bunch of new series. Right. Um, if you, you know, some, and, and, and it's crazy because we still talk via email. And right. I will go and hit him up and be like, hey, are you this guy? Yeah. This show? And he's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I watched... Uh, I, I found this show called High Score Girl, which is like about <laughs> old video games and stuff, which I absolutely loved. Right. And by like episode 10, I'm listening and I'm like, is this Johnny trying to be a 13-year-old boy? And then I <laughs> asked, 
finally, and I was like, dude, I just watched the second season of High Score Girl. Are you the main character? He's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm working my way through um, you his, know, his life. I've been working my way through Baki and Baki the Grappler, and and he's in that one. He's in Dragon Ball. He's in all this other stuff. So yeah. anytime somebody like that um, with that workload right. uh, is willing to do anything for me out of the kindness of their own oh, yeah. heart, and it's like Christmas morning. So Absolutely. either way, the chances, I don't want to go and say like, oh, it's like 100% no. he's going to do it. I'm not going to say that because, you know, 2020 happened. You know what right. I mean? Well, so, no, but there, I'm going the other way. Where I was thinking, like, there's no chance he's doing any more. But you're saying there is a chance he'll do more. No guarantee, but there's a chance he'll do more. Certainly. No guarantee, but definitely right. a chance. There's always That's a chance. Awesome. Man. That's awesome. Your lives Red Fox has. <laughs> Good. That's fantastic. Um, uh, Big Dog, do you have any questions? I have a million, but I want to give you a chance. I to... do. So similar to how you kind of had somebody in mind for that, for uh, Hyperspeed, if you could have any kind of American dub for that, who did you have in mind and who would you kind of want after thinking about it a little bit more? That's a great question. Are you? Always ask the best question. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm here for, guys. I love you so much. Uh, <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm, I'm going to crack open another can of seltzer because keto life. Hey, please do. Um, so, yes, I have always had some people in mind for the voice of hyperspeed. Uh, specifically, I have, th I have three. One is a total long shot, never going to happen. The other one, I could drive about 40 minutes and make it happen. I nice. really wanted to. And then um, the other one is another long shot, but man, oh man, it would be really, really cool. So uh, my, 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 my never going to happen would have been JDF back in the day. Right? Got it. Or he got really busy with all his other stuff. Not to mention he isn't always, always busy. Right. Okay. Um, my number one choice, though, would be Brad Hawkins. Oh. Nice. Now, why do you think – if he's your number one choice and you would never be able to get him? Because I... Oh, I – I could get Brad Hawkins to uh, probably do it if I just drive 40 minutes and go and eat sushi at his restaurant right. a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... And then uh, – and he's a super nice guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, very, very personable. Um I had a couple of nice short conversations with my wife and I when we were at Power Morphicon Express. Right. Just a really, really, really nice, personable guy, a lot like Johnny and a lot like Jason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really, really good, nice people who love fans yeah. and uh, are more than happy to go out of their way for them, which is a beautiful thing, which you don't see in a lot of fans. True. Um, and then my third choice would be someone who I, I haven't met. Um, it would be uh, John Tui. Who oh, yeah. Was the F SPD Shadow Ranger. Yep. And oh, uh, the yeah. Mystic Force Gold yes. Ranger. I, I got to meet him for like a second at uh, Ranger Stop in Florida this year. Um, he was a big deal there. Like, like, I mean, I don't mean that in a, a mean way. I mean, like, he came out, and there was a lot of big stars there, but for he was a bigger-than-life personality amongst all these – like, his normal personality – or he could have been putting on a, a thing for the show, but everyone's nice and friendly. How are you doing? But, like, you could hear him like, ah, oh, ha, ha, come here! You know, like, it was like having, like, the Power Rangers Santa Claus there. You know what I mean? You just – he had an aura around him. He always had a line, you know, and, and so I never really got to talk to him. I never got to interview him or anything like that, but when he was leaving – one day he came by my table and I had a shadow ranger headshot and someone's like, Hey, it's you. I'm like, Oh, here, take it. He's like, thanks. Thanks. Like, Oh, I'll do something for you one day. I'm like, how about a shout out for my channel? He's like, let's do it. And so we did a, a shout out in the, like right there at that moment. So like, yeah, if you could get in front of him, there's a chance he would do it. Cause he seemed like a big boisterous, friendly dude. He seems like a really, really nice guy. And yeah. um, even if I, even if, I can't get him to voice hyperspeed. Yeah. Maybe we'll get him to do the Haka for action activate before uh, an episode starts. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. That would be, but yeah, th th those would be my three choices. Um, you know, otherwise, I mean, there's tons of voice actors out in the anime and video game community. Right. 
um, that I really, really like and really like their styles. Um, you know, but, you know, I also have to think about what it is exactly that we're doing, um, which is this multimedia brand. And if I can't get somebody to go necessarily all in, um, doesn't necessarily make sense for me to have them do one episode and then no one ever sees them again. Right. You, you, don't, have I mean? to, you don't have to recast every time there's a new thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, I mean, based on that, it seems like Brad Hawkins is your go-to because you could theoretically drive to his house um, every month or two to get something from him. <laughs> and the other thing, I, you know, talk about Texas all the time, Texas Satsi, right? Mm -hmm. So many of those Ranger actors live here. Um, I wonder why. I, I thought a lot of them lived like in L.A. area, kind of near-ish to us. I mean, Car uh, Cardenas and, and Karen, Karen Ashley used to, uh, you know, work for the same company my wife works for. Uh, you know, they, they, they all live in Texas. Okay. Uh, ASJ lives here. Uh, JDF lives here. Uh, you know, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, so... The thing is, is, you know, thinking about it, it's like, well, do I go and I take the time and, 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 and whatever. And, and I don't know, I don't, I'm not the one to go and, and rap on somebody's door. Well, uh, not unannounced, certainly. <laughs> certainly not. No, that's, that's a way to get arrested. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? But uh, th that would be the dream list, the dream picks, I right. think, for that character. That's awesome. Let me segue that into... Um, talking about Texas and Texasatsu and indie characters and stuff. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the Indie Wars comic project? Is that something you could talk about? Or? Sure, sure. Um, okay. So there's a comic book company uh, called Antarctic Press, um, also based out of Texas. Um, their primary title, I guess you would call it, is a book called Ninja High School. Which has been around since the 80s, right? Yeah. And uh, a guy named Ben Dunn runs the company. And uh, they also had a comic back in the early 90s before MMPR called Zetra Man. And Zetra Man was like almost like the, and you and I have talked about this, yeah. you, know, you know, privately, um, almost like this parody of Sun Vulcan. Right? And happened just one day randomly same way i got an email from johnny i got an email <laughs> from one of the writers uh from zetraman because they had come across some of guys in the texas community we were now starting to go and circulate the zetraman comics amongst ourselves right and uh, you know he, he hit me up with this idea that Ben Dunn has for crossing Ninja High School, you know, across a bunch of different independent comic universes. It sounded really cool. Uh, so I talked to uh, Deck Mexican and, and the guys from the Time Strikers and, and, and Special Squadron V-Man and God Punk and all of these other indie toku comic right. characters. Um, and we script together with Steve Ross within a few days and uh, Johnny Flores the guy who's behind the artwork of the Immortal Red Fox Volume 2 uh, will be doing our submission for uh, Antarctic Presents Antarctic Press Presents Indie Wars so let me ask you this I'm, I, I actually, this is an image uh, that uh, Big Dog maybe hasn't seen but I know you know it it's the cover that I'm showing to the audience right now of mm -hmm. Antarctic Presents Indie Wars and uh, is it the cover? That's my question. It looks like the cover, but I don't know how official it is. It has Red Fox on front, and you can see uh, the Jammingers and a lot of the other characters you were talking about, God Punk and, and, and all those. Is this art an official cover of something? Is this a print? What is this art that, that we're looking is at? Is it official uh, as far as a cover for the series, Indie Wars? No. Okay. Uh, will we be using it, and will Antarctic Press be using it for marketing mm -hmm. for this specific publication? Yes. Gotcha. Are we going? To, are we going to make it into prints and T-shirts? I certainly hope so because okay. I want one. Uh, so, so it is, it is official art for the project. It's not a cover, but it is official art. Correct. And this That's is cool. this is actually the piece that we used uh, when we got together with Steve Ross, to go and pitch to Ben Dunn. Gotcha. We're like, this is our idea. This is the script. This is what everybody looks like with your characters. Right. Let's go. 
And the, oh, so then and, the three on top are the Ninja High School characters, I'm guessing? Correct. Okay. And you'll see the, the Zentraman characters are at the very, very top of the yeah. image, too. Yeah, because they look, like you said, kind of Sun Vulcan-ish. And then there's there's a few other characters I don't recognize. On there's Hyperspeed Wolf, and then next to him there's it looks like another Sentai team, but I'm not sure I'm not familiar with them. Is that the Time Strikers? Uh, v Man and Time Strikers are on that side. Okay, yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay, yeah, so I know most of these characters from from online or at shows. Some of the creators I met, some I had, but like yeah, that's that's a good assortment you got there. I mean, I think it's a really cool cover. Um, I really liked. I always like what Johnny Flores does. Um, you know what I mean? We right. we can go and sit and talk about comics for hours and hours and hours, and I don't have to say but, you know, 15 words, and he knows exactly <laughs> what I'm looking for. You know what well, I mean? Um, and, and he really went with that, you know, that, that Marvel Secret Wars yes, style. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, they're really? kinda, everybody stacked on top of each other, just like bursting out with action. Let me segue from that to the red fox comic or, or manga i mean it, manga comic same thing it's in america who knows whatever anyway issue one's already out i got it from amazon a while back um issue two when's that coming out um is slated to release on june 30th so okay. that's the end of this month end of this month i had to push some stuff back okay. um because of COVID-19 and everything going on with, sure. you know, the, the climate and everything. So is it, um, is it printed? It's going to be a printed, uh, printed book. Yes. Um, no, no. What I, mean, over... what I mean is it's like done. The whole book is done. It's just a matter of distributing it and putting it through channels and things like that. Gotcha. Okay. Right. It takes a little bit of time, sure. um, you know, because Amazon has certain requirements and you have to you know, jump through hoops a little bit. Mm -hmm. um you know oh your bleed is off by a millimeter right. on all 104 pages please go and re-edit uh, uh you know so uh, not a big deal not a huge deal at all um but you know, it, it's been a long time coming it's a lot of work um and and you and i you, one of the first lessons you ever taught me was about the bottleneck <laughs> yeah <laughs> The bottleneck is a very, very real thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, very excited to get volume two out to everybody on June thirtieth. Uh, but that's not the only news I have. Uh, Bef wait, you before you go into the next news, because I was putting up the image of issue two cover. Who did the art? Was that Johnny or was that someone else? So the cover for this is the uh, one you gave me with the barcode on it. Uh, yeah, um, the one that has the big two. It's got hyperspeed and, yep. and red fox. Yep. Uh, actually, both of them are done by the same guy. But anyway, um, both uh, images that I sent you are done by uh, a guy named Taylor Washington, or okay. Washi Washoi. And Washi was all of the concept art for another indie property. Um, okay. Uh, might not be worthy. Oh, wait. Oh, yes, yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> it took both of us exactly the same amount of time to catch that one. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, because when okay. you said that, I when you didn't put the un in front of it, that's why I was like, what else could it be? And I, then I was like, oh, wait, I was I'm thinking dumb. of comic books instead of live action. So that's what threw me off. No, no. So, so. Uh, I'm more familiar with it than Gazbot, but I follow him on Instagram and see all the different pictures for the Unworthy yeah. Comics. They're going to dive a bit deeper yeah. into um, the Pink Ranger and where she's at currently. I recommend you check that out in addition to Immortal Red Fox if you haven't already. We preach it pretty much every time we talk about it, but that's really awesome. And uh, okay. nice, dude. Well, well, well that, that's pretty awesome. Okay, but I interrupted you to ask about that because you said there was something else coming up in addition to uh, issue two and in addition to the new episode. So you got a third thing coming up. What's that? Yeah, a third so, thing to talk about. <laughs> not only will we have, you know, we just had episode five drop. Mm -hmm. uh, and on June 30th, the Immortal Red Fox volume two will be released. Right. I'm also happy to announce that on July 30th, top of Indie Wars and all that other stuff. Right. Mortal Kombat Fox Volume 3 will also come out. What? Oh! And now I have that <laughs> image on the screen. I was... This is a surprise to me. It seems like it's not because I have this image ready, but 
uh, you sent me this image like earlier today or yesterday, and I was looking at it, like, was this a mistake? This must be for a future. This can't be ready to come out now. How? How? How are you? How? How? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the bottleneck. Yes. Talk about you know making comics and making artwork. Right. I um I will say that I maybe it off a little more than I could chew mm-hmm. with uh, the amount of artwork that I put into um, volume two. Right. Uh, you know, beautiful, full color, gorgeous files of artwork. And what wound up happening was it was, a, it was just too much. It was okay. too much. It was, it was huge. Um, and it was not going to be possible for Amazon to accommodate our needs. Um, which, because because you know, there was literally too many pages or? Too many pages okay. and, and files were way too big because they're high, you know, they're high quality, high res right. images. Um, so what we had to do was take our page count and kind of just cut it in half and then oh. go and make two books. Um, so you're going to get a lot of story um, mm-hmm. in the span of two books at a lower price than volume one, which is great. Right. Um, and they're now going to be the same size as volume one. So they're going to look uh, all uniform for people who are kind of OCD like me. Right. Uh, I got you. You know, I'm glad to see them both being the same or all being the same size. So that, they'll look nice. That's really shelf. that's really funny that like basically your backup plan that you are doing because you had to results in sort of a better product in a weird way. Yeah, and you know what? It's so funny because everyone else on the team said the same thing, and I was the only one dumb enough not to realize it. Gotcha. Well, hey, <laughs> is, you know what? You were smart enough to listen to everyone else, though, right? I fought it the whole way. I was like, <laughs> I want a huge book. I want a, you know, and it's just. Well, that's no. oh, I was going to say about the comic specifically, mm-hmm. volume two coming out end of this month. Great. Volume three coming out the end of July, even better. But taking a couple steps back, can you kind of walk people through? I, I'm i going to lead this off because I know sometimes talking good about yourself can be difficult, especially for present party included. So um, I'm with great. everything that's been going on, it seemed like. Immortal Red Fox was kind of the spearhead of a lot of the indie tokusatsu and texasatsu kind of making sure of promoting good messages and keeping people together, but also tying into the comic. There's something you did in particular a couple months back. Can you kind of walk us through what you decided to do when things kind of landed as they were throughout the world as a whole? Uh, so, so you guys know that I work in, in the healthcare field, in the emergency medicine field. Yeah. And um, one thing that I wanted to do for everybody, because being stuck at home sucks. Mm-hmm. It really does. Especially if you're not an introvert. And, and, you know, believe it or not, outside of comic book fans and stuff like that, some of us aren't introverts. <laughs> are. um, you know, and what I had wanted to do was kind of promote know staying at home what you're doing is a good thing don't feel bad about it don't feel downtrodden about it and uh that's where we actually got together with Gio alvarez who does some really great artwork and you're gonna start seeing him popping up more and more and more on instagram it's amazing um where we started the be a hero stay home right uh movement where you see all of the indie heroes and David Yost and Legend of the White Dragon, they all got in on it with the little masks, you know, yeah. surgical mask over their helmets. Uh, and that rolled over into the, the Clean Hands, Open Hearts movement that we had started. Um, and, and Big Dog and Gaz, you guys both talked about it on one of your news programs, but um, anybody who went and watched episodes one through three of, uh, of the Red Fox series and then left a new comment and sent clean hands, open hearts to us, to our email, a free digital copy of the book. And that's still running. I'm not promoting it as much, oh. but, it, but it is still running. If anybody, awesome. wants to go, if anybody wants to go and do that and share that, um, look, you know, you're, yeah. you're sending, the message that you're sending is a lot better <laughs> without sounding terrible is a lot better than the comic book that I'm 
I'm sending you. You know what I mean? Um, so different, different. Yeah, you know, and and like um, it's like you said, talking nice about yourself is kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's why I tried to preface it as much as I could. Of, yeah, yeah. No, uh, and and obviously, you know, that's really great. I know for us, we were big uh, proponents of it, and it's Absolutely. such an awesome thing because uh, kind of like with our show, I know uh, a couple months back, Gazbot and I, when we were talking about it, we're like, well, obviously we're still going to do the show. What are we going to do? Everybody needs a distraction. Everybody needs something good right. during the week, regardless of what's going on the time of year. So that's what we're going to do. And obviously you took it even a step further by having people promote and then being able to kind of come together uh, yeah, both it was... figuratively and uh, digitally with uh, the comic. So right. having and, the comic, yeah. having the series and everything was and, great. And, Go the, for it, and the, I was, and the leadership, just the leadership yep. of the community was, was what impressed me the most that, you know, you, it was very like, I don't think you set out to put yourself on a pedestal, but you were like, guys, we got to do something. Let's do something. And so everyone just sort of followed you. You know, it was, it was the perfect way to lead. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of being like, here's what I like. You're just like, why would we, you know, like, come on, follow me, man up the hill. You know, and it was, it was great. That makes me feel really, really good, actually. Thank you very much. Good. Oh, of course, man. Thank you for, you know, doing that. And I, to be quite honest, I was unaware that you were still doing that. So me too. everybody, yeah. when you're looking at this, if you love physical media, obviously, you know, the three volumes on Amazon are going on there. If you're, you know, looking for a quick read on your uh, computer right now, like some of us have read in the past, please right. go follow. Obviously, watch all the videos as well and uh, just stay foxy, as it were. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> some of us pay attention. I, I won't speak for others, but, you know, some do. I'm hashtag stay foxy all the time. What Whoa, are you talking about? Hey, no. Whoa. I didn't call anybody out. That seemed awfully defensive. I think we have I a guest in our that. home. We have a guest in our home. Let's not argue. Let's let's not argue. <laughs> uh, that, you know you wouldn't be in the right spot if we weren't arguing. We got to do it at least once a show. So thank you for facilitating I, both positivity and arguments. I uh, I will agree for the sake of tranquility. <laughs> but I I am I'm going to self promote. And I'm a piggyback on what you were saying because uh, a while back, uh, Matt and I did a Immortal Red Fox print to, to benefit partners in health for COVID. And I, actually, I got an image I'll throw up here of it. And why am I bringing that up? Not just to be self-aggrandizing, look at me, ha, 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 I'm so great. Uh, but because what I did when we did this, uh, we, it's a limited run. There's no more. So like it, it, when you donated, all the profits went to Partners in Health, which which help uh, COVID, but specifically in the poorest areas and the most hard hit and everything. So that was the idea. And so A, go donate to them. But B, I only made 25 prints total ever. I did not sell 25. We sold a bunch. And a few people who said they were going to buy one didn't, and I made a few extra because if one got damaged in the mail or something, I've learned from experience that you got to have some backups. Uh, and so I didn't realize how many I was still left with until I started talking about this interview, and we have six left. Now, I think what we're going to do is give one of them away. To someone watching this video, put it in the comments, say uh, – uh, oh my gosh, I forgot the thing. Clean, clean, hands, clean open hands, open hearts. Open hearts. Clean hands, open hearts. Throw that in the comments. Share that around. You put that in, and I'll randomly pick one of you people. You give me your address, and I'll mail it to you. You don't have to pay anything. You just get it. Everyone else, we got five left. I'm not going to put it up on my Etsy store or anything like that. If you're interested in one, they're $10 each. All the profit will go to Partners in Health. Let me know here. Or anywhere else, and it could be yours. The only caveat is, if it gets damaged in the mail, I can't fix it for you because these are, you know, these are the backups. Yes. One better too. Yeah. Those last five that you have, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Five left. Okay. So anybody who wants to buy one, and including the person who comments, clean hand, clean hands, open hearts, will also get a digital copy of the Immortal Red Fox Volume One and the Immortal Red Fox. Oh, what? look at that! So you're saying that they could get this limited edition print for for ten dollars, but also get one and two of the Immortal Red Fox, and one person has a chance to get it just by commenting. 
that's amazing. I guys, I and ladies and dogs and kittens and puppies. I did not know he was going to do that. So uh, I didn't either. Yeah, no, nobody did. <laughs> He's just busting. See, leadership. That's what I'm saying. Because as a it, neutral, as a neutral third party, everybody participating in that. Please follow both of these guys on social media. I'm just a dude. They're even more than that. So follow them and also subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already, just because I'm, I'm just a man. You guys are both the Gazbot and the heart and soul of the Immortal Red Fox. Bigger than uh, a, a mild little uh, big dog. But, you know, if we're bigger I'm, than the big dog, that's impressive. I'm just part of Action Activate. I'm just happy to be here. But go follow, go like, go subscribe. While you're on social media, why stop there? Just uh. keep keep the positivity of rolling and follow all the awesome. indie toku people too yeah everybody exactly. we've talked about you know um but enough about us um how much we got we got about 10 minutes left or so you know we don't have to be right on the dot um big dog do you i have a bunch of things to discuss a bunch of questions big dog or matt did either of you have anything you wanted to talk about or an ask before i just railroad the rest of the episode with what i want to talk about keep on keep on keep it on um i mean i'm like most of my questions, obviously, Matt, for you, as I've dug deeper into Fo Mortal Red Fox through the videos originally, diving into the comic as well, mm -hmm. um, specifically for hyperspeed, it seems like he – so I, I'm of two minds. I, I need you to figure this out for me. Did you get more WWF slash WWE inspiration or your shirt is helping me think it's the latter? Was it more Hercule? <laughs> For the comic specifically, what was the inspiration? It could be neither. Wait, those were the first two I thought of. Can I? But I I'm curious. I want I want the question answered, but I want to throw my guess in. Kiniku okay, man. Please. Kiniku man. Ooh! Known in America as Muscle. Ooh, yeah, that's a third one. Okay, you got to spill the beans. Take it now. away. Take it away. What? Both right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so definitely Hercule. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely uh, Muscle. Right. Okay. Uh, I love pro wrestling, especially the uh, the International World Grand Prix, mm -hmm. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh yeah. Um, also, I am a huge, huge fan of. Uh, they, they have a new series on Netflix, uh, but I, I've read the manga and watched the old series called uh, Grop Grappler Baki, or, or Baki the Grappler. Does um, Johnny Young Bosch do a voice in that? Uh, <laughs> bringing a full circle there you go uh, but yeah and 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 being a, a martial artist and 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 a wrestling fan myself um definitely inspired heavily by all of those things uh, so it's 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 funny because you know in in volume one Hyper speed is definitely a lot more like hercule mm -hmm. as things progress Throughout, and you've read volume two and volume three at this point now, um, big dog. You, um, oh, I didn't get to read. I haven't, I haven't fully finished. <laughs> I'm, I'm in it. It's still, but I haven't fully finished. Just for full See, transparency, I am no longer in the future. I'm in the past because I've only read volume one. He's in 2018, <laughs> waiting for episode three to drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, short answer: You guys are both right um, awesome. and pretty spot on, and and. That makes me happy that you guys can pick up on the things that, you know, <laughs> I like. Because as we talked about in our first interview, this is just an avenue for us to infuse the things we like into one thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So now I'm going to take some questions. Uh, I'm going to give some questions, rather. Um, and you were talking about putting your feet to the fire. This, this is that part. Um, watching right. the episodes, do you have – the intros, which are sort of like half recap of what's happened before and half like this is what's going on in the world. And in they're all a little different. They all show different things. And they're almost like part of the ep like like new content for the episode, even though it's like the recap intro. We've seen a lot of really amazing stuff in those intros, including what looks like an immortal red fox mech or zord some giant like kaiju and some daikaiju. And, and uh, I, we saw hyperspeed in one of the openings. When are we going to see these different elements show up in the actual episodes? We got hyperspeed, we got the mech, we got the kaiju, but none of them have made it into episodes yet. When? Wow. Um, it's coming. Um, so I will say we have now currently 
five episodes left okay. for our season. Okay? okay. They are coming faster than mm. they did before. Okay. You are going to see Hyperspeed make his premiere, uh, not next episode, but the episode after. Okay. So episode... Maybe, maybe next episode at the very, very end. Well, you're not... And, so you're saying possibly the end of six as like a little cameo. For sure seven, though. Gotcha. So sure. episode six is like one Hulk 180 for Wolverine. Episode seven is Hulk 181. Exactly. <laughs> It's not just like, oh, he shows up for a split second, and then that's it. That's the hyperspeed episode. Right. Once hyperspeed's there, he's in for the long haul. Right. Every scene, every fight, he's there. Gotcha. The mech battles and the giant thigh kaiju and, mm-hmm. and, and things like that, those are saved for the finale. Um, so they will uh, be this season, though. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know, man. You're saying that like I'm in your production meetings. I don't. <laughs> so I, I'm buried in this stuff, man. You know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a follow up question to Gazball. I know for the first few episodes, you had a soft goal of certain milestones you wanted to hit before releasing a new episode. Obviously, ramping things mm. up, maybe even turning them to hyper a bit. Speed. Um, <laughs> uh, what are some of the goals that you want to hit? Just Obviously, the momentum's going, and we have all these different avenues to see Red Fox and all these different avenues. What is your kind of message to the people of like, you know what, guys? I can put these out even faster if you hit, boom, X milestone or right. this thing. I'm not going to go and get greedy and get crazy. Um, you know, anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 plays uh, within the first week, I'm really, really happy with because I was over the moon. Over the moon. <laughs> And then he became um, a werewolf in the middle of the interview. We didn't know it happened. <laughs> I was really excited with what happened with the last episode. That was, the, uh, I mean, looking at the metrics from the outside, it looked like that was the most successful one you've had yet. And it's such like it's such a short time too. Amount of time. So I want to keep that momentum going. Right. But also yep. like let's get to a thousand followers. We're right at six hundred. Right. There's no reason we can't get to a thousand. Um, you know, I don't. Un- I don't uh, understand the algo- algorithms. Neither do we. Algorithm. Yep. You got the it. algorithms. Yeah. No. Nobody does. No, nobody can say it. Nobody knows what it means. It's uh... the algorithms are like the points on whose line is it anyway. They're there. No one knows what they do. And they don't really matter. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll do you one better. Um. Uh. We recently hit a thousand subs. We're a little bit over it now, which is great. But the the thousand subs, the reason people are always like, oh, because then you could start monetizing. And yeah, you get a penny, you get a dollar, whatever. We still can't monetize, just so you know. A thousand is a nice milestone, makes you feel good. And when I say we're not making money, I don't mean that in the, oh, we made a dollar. I mean, literally, we're still not making money. Because there's other behind-the-scenes milestones you have to get of a certain amount of hours watched and things like that. So going back to how do things work, who knows? Just watch and have fun. (laughs) I mean, as far as milestones and stuff, I just yeah. want people to keep sh- – bottom line is I want people to keep sharing our content right. with each other. Or, you know, we, we had – back in the day, we had stuff, you know, like France 5. And we had these movies, these home movies that August Ragon and Barry Evans and all of these guys worked on together that weren't necessarily tokusatsu. Right. Right. They were a thing for the fans of Tokusatsu. And that's what I want to happen with Immortal Red Fox. Right. If you want to support us? Buy the books. Rock a t-shirt. You know, volunteer to go and wear the suit at a con. I don't care. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and, and that has happened already. So yeah. um, as long as, like I said, as long as the ball keeps rolling, rolling forward and it stays fun. Yeah. I have no other requests, man. There's not a whole lot else that I want from. I, Good to hear. That that is awesome to hear. I have a question. Well, I have, I have so many questions. I'm never going to get to them all. Uh, Same. But related <laughs> to what you were saying about having fun, we've had – well, by the time this airs, we'll have had five episodes-ish. I mean a little bit more than five, but five episodes of the show, and you have at least five more lined up. As far as I know, you have not been on camera or done a voice yet, have you? Say that again. I have been on camera, and when, I have done voices. Well, the voice I wasn't sure. Like, okay, so w- 
what have you done on the show? Because it, it's crazy to me that you – like if I was doing it, I'd be the superhero or the big monster. I'd be something. You know what I mean? And you – so what have you done? So I've been a bumbler. Uh, the guys oh, the in the suit? Gotcha. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, if you look at our Instagram, there's backstage uh, – you know, BTS shots yes. of me holding the camera, filming Red Fox, but I have a black onesie and. Oh, clothes. I've uh, seen that picture, but I didn't make the connection. Like, of what? Okay. I've done uh, some of the some of the VO, like uh, for the weapons and things like that, mm-hmm. along with my friend uh, Joel Diaz, who works uh, very closely with Garage Hero. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, and uh, let's see, what else have I done? Oh. I was um, before we cast uh, Keenan to play Ted mm-hmm. uh, in episode two, where Ted sticks out his arm. Yeah, it says "Go, go, fox yourself." That's me. Um, yeah. And whenever Ted is, you see Ted's back, and he's walking around in Japan. That's me as well. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so, okay, so you have been in. I was say, when are we going to see you in it? And I guess the answer is, we may never see you in it, but you are in it. You're always there. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, I had a f- – Big Dog, follow this up because I'm trying to remember a thought that just flew out of my head. So obviously you've been in the episodes both audio and visual to various degrees. Do you have any plans with season two of having a face role or do you like kind of seeing everything shape out from behind the camera more than kind of being in front of it and directly involved? Excellent. Um, I, I I don't like to be directly um, in front of the camera mm. because uh, I have to go and stop and check and and fix things. Um, you know, like we have two or three people, including myself, running around with fanny packs on, with tape and glue. And right. And, right. You know what I mean? And in between takes grabbing a helmet and running off while they run through choreography and then running back on and... <laughs> the helmet back on and stuff like that um so you know um as far as being a face no i don't see that happening Uh, it's it's a lot better for me to go and and be behind the scenes make sure it looks the way we want it to look right um everybody happy make sure everybody's doing okay during shoots um and and be a part of that process uh you know to make the the best product possible otherwise but, you know, if I'm in front of the camera all the time, I'm not going to see what's happening. You know what I mean? And then you could have a 12 or 13 or 14 hour day shoot and then get home and you're like, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, I don't want to ever see that happen. So, uh, that makes sense. I, yeah. No, I, I, you're putting your ego to the side to make a better product. That, that's respectable. That's respectable. I don't yeah. want to generalize that. <laughs> Would you? Um, I was thinking about your channel and you know how by necessity it takes a while for each video to come out, and you do want to grow the channel. And not that we're any kind of experts, like we're doing the same thing as you. But I did notice that just by posting more regularly, it, it helped a little bit with growth. And obviously, that's hard for what you do. But it occurred to me. I'm interested in behind the scenes stuff. Lots of people are interested in behind the scenes stuff. Not just of, you know, Steven Spielberg movies, but like stuff like you. People go, well, how do you make those armbands? And how do you, like, stuff that people could go to Kmart, buy some stuff. And have you thought about in between the actual episodes doing some, like, behind the scenes, just a minute or two? Oh, look, here's how we shot this, or here's how we built that, or look at the green screen. That would be really interesting content, I would think. Um, yeah. Here's the issue, though. We have, um, four guys including myself mm-hmm. working on the episodes in post right it takes a lot um you know between the the color correction vfx and and then someone to do the subs and 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 someone to do the vo and everything like that sure. or the you know the japanese voiceover and do it properly and make sure it sells right um because sometimes it doesn't and then we have to go back to the drawing board and fix things um I do want to show people what I've learned right. how to make this, you know, on how to make this stuff. But my way is my way, and it's not necessarily the right way Fair. at all. Right. Everything, everything that I learned, I learned from other people right. who, were, who were kind enough to show me what they know. Um, and it took 
spending fifteen hundred dollars on a plane ticket and <laughs> and going to Japan and buying some people dinner and right. and hanging out and having them tell you your work is not so great, right? And then you go back and you fix it. Um, I, I would never ask anybody else who wants to make their own stuff to you know for that, right? Um, but I think right now where my mindset is at is I still make mistakes, sure, constantly, and have to overcome mistakes to make good stuff. It might not be great. It might be kind of wishy washy. You might have questions about it. Um, I think that that's really important. I think that's really important for anybody who wants to make stuff, especially when we talk about tokusatsu. Tokusatsu is not comics. Comics are not tokusatsu. You have to get past the artwork phase mm -hmm. and go one way or the other. Because if you don't, you're not going anywhere. And, and you have to get past that fear. Um, and you have to not be afraid to go and fall flat on your face. Well, that's true um, of anything, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We do have a lot of new creators popping up and stuff like that. And you know, anybody who wants to make something, that's what I would tell them. Right. Uh, and if they want, you know, behind the scenes stuff, I've got pictures and goofy videos and all sorts of stuff like that all day. I don't know how many people would want to see that. Lots. Uh, let, let me let me stop you. Everything you said makes perfect sense. And and you know, I understand like I don't necessarily feel comfortable teaching people how to do comics. I've done it, but I'm always like I still am learning what I'm doing too. Like I, I get that. And then I'm taking time away from making my comics and so I get everything you're saying. Makes perfect sense. But if you could just throw up raw footage like you know just make like a little header of like you know f fox bits or whatever some dumb little header that you reuse every time and then it's like oh here's a 30 second clip yeah <laughs> here's a 30 second second clip of, of the bumblers falling over oh here's a here's a minute and a half footage of that time we were trying to make that effect where and you don't even have to do a vo you don't have to explain it you don't have to be teaching people but just, just throw it up, being out there just fun little bits that'll fill the time between videos and they're are people who will enjoy it. Some of whom are fans of your work, some of whom don't even know who you are, but like, look at this fun little behind the scenes thing. I really think you're underestimating how easily you could put it out there. Like, like don't polish it, don't do anything. Just throw it out there and people will watch it and it'll help traffic to your channel. That That's that's my guarantee. I mean, there... <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I absolutely understand if you still don't want to do it. I just want to make sure I was making my suggestion clear that i'm not trying to give you more work than is necessary so i'm not. really good at doing that with him <laughs> it's true it's true <laughs> all right well we're at uh an hour seven so we should wrap it up uh big dog anything else you want to throw out there yeah mine was kind of a random one i apologize for forgetting the name of the suit actor for red fox but um, I was wondering when it comes to some of the scenes and some of the different techniques and tricks that he's doing, if there's anything he's doing uh, that either you're influencing or he's kind of bringing in and you're letting him take the lead on of where kind of the training is going, where the inspiration for both some of the techniques and choreography is. Because I, I don't currently, but I've done tricking in martial arts for a while and seeing some of his videos and seeing that gets me kind of juiced up again. Like, all right, awesome. So just kind of from your behind the scenes take, what kind of that uh, dynamic is. Our, our, our primary suit actor, uh, he, he's Red Fox. He's been Red Fox at conventions and in the, and in the series during all of our action stuff. Um, comes from a, a Korean based martial arts system and a capoeira background, and a tricking background, and a dance background. Um, all around, I let Robert do Robert, because I know that nine times out of ten, what he's going to do is going to look amazing on camera. Right. You know, like, you, could take, you can't take a, a Taekwondo black belt him in a spandex suit and a helmet and make him a tokusatsu actor. Right, that, exactly. That doesn't work. Um, but because he understands choreography, mm -hmm. that's the more important part. Okay, that's the more important part. Um, and and as far as you know, what do we tell him to do? What do we, you know? Not a whole lot. He says, <laughs> "I want to, I want to do a full 360 with a layout," and I'm like, 
okay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? So, um, once again, man, I, I continue to go back to the idea of we are incredibly, incredibly lucky. Mm-hmm. And um, Robert Guy is definitely an, a huge part of that equation of how lucky we are. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's a trickster. A little goofy. Which works because he's a fox, know. too. Trickster exactly. fox, huh? Nah. But man, oh man, does he deliver. That's fantastic. Every time. Yeah, I noticed in the, the most recent episode, I don't have a martial – well, I took Taekwondo in high school for like a year, but I don't know anything about martial arts. Um, I, I had to – why did I feel the need to say that? I was like, I, I was like, I don't know anything about martial arts. Well, actually, Let just – discredit <laughs> myself and then give an opinion. <laughs> yeah, but I had to say that I did take a little bit of Taekwondo just in case – you know. But uh, no, but I did notice in the most recent episode that he was doing these like crazy like high roundhouse spinny kicks. Again, I don't even know where – but there was like two or three – I'm like, that seemed difficult. That was cool. Like, yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I always noticed it, but specifically the new episode that dropped, I saw, like, th- towards the end of the fight, there was, like, three kicks in a row that were pretty impressive. And Robert, the the, the, the second I saw him, um, when we went out recruiting for a different guy, right. we saw Robert at this martial arts uh, and dance stage show warming up the crowd. I was like, I don't want that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, because he can fly, man. And he's got a great attitude, and uh, love him, love him from the bottom of our hearts. Well, he's, he do- says- he's doing a great job, and we look forward to seeing at yeah. least five more episodes of him, at least. All right, so for this season, for son. this season, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, so to recap, the new episode is out. It's awesome. Go check it out. The book will be out the end of this month, and then the next book will be out the end of next month. It's all the Immortal Red Fox. You can find them everywhere. Any, any social media or something you – good. You do your own plug. I was doing it for you, but you could do it better than me. Red Fox Volume 1 now available on Amazon.com. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Immortal Red Fox on Facebook at The Immortal Red Fox. Volume 1, 2, and 3 all available. Uh, volume two on June thirtieth, volume three on July thirtieth, and uh, you know, Frosty <laughs> <stay> awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being awesome and being Foxy and and doing everything you do. And please keep doing it. And who knows? Maybe if you do it long enough, somebody you know will show up in a, in an episode that 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 you know maybe 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 who knows. <laughs> Real babu. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, you know. Okay. Well, we're getting it. You know what? Come back on. We'll talk again because we're, we're over an hour, but we keep talking forever. Um, All right, guys. So this has been Action Activate. Get us bot. <laughs> Big Dog Defender. Bummer. And? And? To, to the, the power. power. Woo! See you guys later. Let's put on the uh, end credits. Okay. We end- did it. <laughs> we did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. End credits are rolling now. I'm still recording. Feel free to talk over them if you like. What's it? Yeah. Is that JDF? Jeez, what did you guys get for voiceover calls? I'm trying to hold in a sneeze. I want to see Scooby Doo. Super Transform. And we are done. Uh, this has been Action Activate. I'm Gazbot. Big Dog Defender. And with us today. Nothing came out of your mouth. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can we do it again? Because I want to do to the power all at the same time. Okay, yeah, but okay, your, your okay. mic keeps cutting out. Like, nothing See, came I, out. Yeah. I need an extreme close-up for okay. this ending just so we ensure that we get the volume. All right. All right. So, anyway, this has been Action Activate. I've been Gazbot. Big Dog Defender here. And with us. No, I, we're not hearing. Oh. It's not coming out of your we're mouth. Not, it's, it's almost. So, you got to say who you are. Then we're going to do the power. By the way, all of this is going to be included in the end. Yeah, but but also, for some reason, your mic, it takes a second to start. So you're going, and nothing's coming out. Yeah, try a... Mortal Red Fox. Yeah, try just saying it right now. See if it works. Nope, nothing came out. Dang it. There you go. Yeah. Make a noise before you start. I'm Matt Palmer. <laughs> ah, <Mortal Red> Fox. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, well, I'll do a little. Yeah, that'll. Okay, okay. Yes. All okay. right.